everybody. Welcome to Odd and Untold, the podcast where we talk about all things strange and spooky. And this week we're doing an emphasis on the spooky because I'm talking to my buddy Andy from the Spooky Island Radio podcast. Andy, thank you so much for coming on. We've been talking about this for a long time. Yeah, yeah, it's been so long. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's um, we must have been talking for well over about a year now. Yeah, um, definitely. Because I think we started our shows around the same time. Yeah. I, I believe so because when I was doing, you know, my my research, and when I first started my podcast, it was um, I sort of looked at podcasts who were at the same sort of point as me to have a bit of a reference to, and yeah, I believe you were one of them that I found, and yeah, been listening to ever since. <laughs> yeah, so we've been kind of following each other and talking to each other through in, uh, Instagram and uh, that sort of method. And I know we were kind of on a group chat with a bunch of other podcasters. Uh, yeah. which has been cool and and it's always nice to kind of have that community and and people supporting each other and I know you give me shout outs all the time on your show I try to give you shout outs on my show a lot um so it's nice to have that support and not that competition and and just to sort of say like here's another great podcast to listen to um and yours is really one that I I do follow I've been following you since the early days and like I said like when we first kind of found each other um and you used to do like the the campfire tales and mm-hmm. Uh, just, you know, you, you had kind of offshoots of your show where you were doing the campfire tales, you had your main shows, and then you kind of moved into the missing 411. And I'm sorry, I'm talking a lot here. So I'll let you, <laughs> no, let, like, so, so tell me a little bit about how, like how and why you started your podcast. Yeah, I mean, first of all, it's easier to shout you out because I actually listen to the show every week and, you know, we get on. So it's not, it's not, I tried to not do it with people that sort of, I can't be authentic with, you know, like I listen to you every week and we get on. That's why I give you a lot of shout outs. But, um, but yeah, it started because I used to listen to a podcast. I don't know if you've heard it um, called Scared to Death. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And I sort of, obviously that's a married couple trying to scare each other basically. And um, I just thought to myself that I'd just moved to London. So I was like, got a new job, but obviously COVID hit. Um, and I was just looking at list. I was listening to podcasts more and more and I got like a really good friend down here that I worked with and she was like into all spooky stuff. And, um, and basically I said, look, should we just, you know, you listen to scared to death. Like, should we just, should we start something like that? Um, so yeah, so we started a podcast called the haunted hangover. So it's basically her coming around to my flat and we just tell these stories to each other have a few drinks, that sort of thing, um, which was good. It was nice. It was just, she sort of, after a few, probably about six, seven months, it was, she wasn't, didn't have the heart of it like I did, which is fine. She sort of stopped speaking to me for a few days because she was worried I was going to go off on her. I was like, ah. no, it's, it's like fine. Like just, you know, it, it's absolutely fine. I mean, it's easier because I don't have to, if I want to change something, I can just do it. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> you know? Um, but yeah, no, so she's, yeah. So obviously still really good friends of her. Um, and it's sort of, I, I sort of changed my format a bit. Cause obviously that was a conversation between two people. Um, and that's where spooky on the radio came from. It's sort of myself finding, researching, writing some stories, um, and putting them out and then, yeah, that's that's sort of how it came around and campfire tales were the shorter episodes because i was sort of doing them weekly um which is really hard (laughs) i don't know how you do it i don't know how you do it um so the campfire tales were obviously just stories i'd sourced from places that i was telling so it was easier for me to um do it weekly but i just sort of found my heart wasn't in it as much and then i did one of my main episodes on missing 411 and I seen this huge spike, this huge <laughs> spike. And I was like, oh, um, so I did another couple of episodes and they always seem to sort of do quite well. And I, the more I sort of fall down the rabbit hole, the more I realize, oh, actually, I quite enjoy, <laughs> enjoy this as well. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's funny how you develop these interests when you start researching things and because I, I was aware of the missing 411 phenomena for a while, but I never really got into it. You know, it was mm-hmm. just kind of this thing that you'd hear people mention in the comments of places. And 
I was always just like, oh, missing 411. There's, there's a bunch of books and it's about missing people. And I never really gave it much attention yeah. until maybe like the past year or so. And I started getting really into it. And, we, you know, we can get into that in a little bit. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, it's it's such a, um, an interesting phenomenon because it's it's is it paranormal? Is it natural? Is it like now, no matter how you cut it, it's weird, you know, like yeah. even if it's completely just totally normal and these people are just you know, dying of exposure or animal attacks or just getting lost or whatever it is, it's just an interesting, weird phenomenon that it happens so much and it happens in like with the same sort of set of symptoms, I guess you will, or, or, or it's like a pattern, a yeah, pattern. Yes, exactly. That's the word I was looking for. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I mean, so... I, I, I sorry, I, I sort of put my finger on it. I think it's because, and I did write this down. I think it's because it's popular because it's where sort of true crime meets paranormal. Because, like you say, it's like, oh, is it something else? Is it such and such, or is it just people getting lost, dying of exposure, like say, or animal attacks? And it's sort of the unknown, so it's sort of blends the two. And obviously, true crime is huge. I think that's why people like it so much. Yeah, and it's just it th- there's so many weird aspects to the missing 411 things where it's not just someone goes missing and then they find the body, you know, oh this person died of exposure or this person was attacked by a bear. Mm-hmm. There's so many just weird instances where these people, you know, sometimes they're never found again but their clothing is found yeah. and it's like neatly folded on a rock somewhere or they survive and, you know, sometimes it's like little children. It's like a two-year-old mm-hmm. and they end up like eight miles away. Yeah. And the little girl or little boy will say, oh, yeah, like a, a friendly bear took care of me. And it, mm. you hear the same sort of thing over and over again. Like, and it's like friendly bear, you know, like that doesn't make sense. Yeah, because bears and are not friendly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, you you know, you have all these and there's so many other weird uh, patterns and and. Uh, clues for these missing 411 cases where it's just there always seems to be like a a weird weather pattern Mm -hmm. right after the person goes missing which makes searching for them you know difficult like snow or rain or their body is eventually found in a place where it has been searched numerous times before so monday tuesday wednesday thursday they're searching the same area then friday like here's the body and it's like how Mm -hmm. did we miss this we've been over you know just very strange and again, I'm not saying it's paranormal. It's just a, a very bizarre phenomena. Yeah, it, it really is. And like having dug through stories and stories, and, you know, websites and websites like uh, newspaper clippings and all this sort of thing, it's the patterns do show, oh, such and such went missing. One of the other things is like, you know, right underneath people's noses. Mm-hmm. Now they were there and then a second later, they turn around, they're gone. Like you say, the weather previously searching somewhere, and now they're just they're there. It's like how many times do you ignore those patterns before you say actually something is going on? We just don't know what it is. Yeah, and like you're saying, like these people seem to disappear into thin air. These are people who are like following each other on a trail, and the lead person will then turn around, and the, their partner behind them is just gone, and yeah. they're yelling for them and. You know, as somebody who's hiked in the woods many, many times, like that's, it's easy to lose sight of someone. It really Mm -hmm. is like, you know, because I I go camping with my buddy a lot and he'll go off, you know, to go take a leak and he he goes 10 feet into the woods and I can't see him anymore, but I can still hear him. I can hear the footsteps. We can talk to each other, but seeing him can be kind of tough, but we can kind of talk to each other. Mm -hmm. So you'd think like if someone just went off trail and something happened if it was an animal attack or a person like you'd hear a scream you'd hear, you'd hear yeah. a scuffle you'd hear something and it's just they're walking and then they turn around and the person's gone or the kid is gone and yeah very strange so very strange phenomenon um, very interesting very strange yeah but i always love your episodes on it i mean it, no thank you it, it, it's great <laughs> and uh i did a show on missing 411 way back um with a couple of my co-hosts but yeah, yeah i mean I, I love your show because you really drill down into like specific cases every week so yeah I, I sort of wanted it to be a bit more or oh, my voice just broke then um i wanted it to be a bit different like my main episodes which can be quite um what's the word, like intense sometimes the stories and 
I wanted like the missing four and one case file episodes to be a bit more chilled, you know, sort of just going into like what I can research, what I can find. And that's all I say, you know, and then I give my opinion on it, but I'm not dramatizing it in any way. Like I do with like my main, my main episodes and yeah, I, I just really enjoy sitting down and writing them and researching because it's just more chilled out. <laughs> Yeah. And you have like really great production values. I mean, I just love the music and I love like your voice. You just have this really cool way of just reading the stories and it, it, it's spooky. And it's just, I, I listen to them a lot. Uh, the missing formal ones I listen to a lot when I'm cooking because okay, nice. they're shorter and like, it doesn't take me long. I mean, I'm single guy. It doesn't take me too long to cook. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I listen to those usually when I'm cooking and then the, the longer form episodes I usually listen to when I'm sitting outside having a beer or a cigar yeah. and just, you know, chilling after a long day. So nice. yeah, they, they've gotten me through this past year. I've listened to a lot of your episodes and well, thank uh, you. yeah, like once you, I mean, I love the campfire tales. I remember listening to those a lot because yeah, they were just very chill. Just, you know, listen to, you know, someone tell a ghost story and, and very cool. And then yeah. you switch the missing form one one and I was like, man, these are really good. So Congrats on those. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad they got you. you like the the ink, the bump in in listeners. Yeah, no, it's um, yeah, it's it's good. I mean, it's you know, I'm, I'm nowhere near like hundreds of thousands of downloads, but it's um, I just enjoy it, and it's like even if it takes me time, at least it's a hobby that I enjoy, and yeah, I just I just really enjoy doing them. Yeah. And, and like you said earlier, I mean, th this is tough. It's tough to do this week in and week out and, and try to find the time and then it's editing and it's, you know, it, it, and then personal stuff going on in our lives where it's just, yeah, it could be demoralizing sometimes and you just don't want to do it. But, uh, you know, props to you for, for, you know, going along oh, with thank it. Thank you. Yeah. And so I look forward to your episodes every week and I know you just celebrated your 50th episode. Yeah, God, this is a long time coming. I feel like I, you know what it takes it out here. Yeah, I feel like I'd done more, but I definitely had. It was definitely <laughs> said on my um, on my uh, podcast host. It was like fifth, like fiftieth episode. But I was like, God, I, th but I think I took a bit of time out uh, sort of the end of last year, um, just a couple of months, just to get my head straight a bit. But but yeah, fifty episodes. God, you're you're just past that, aren't you? You're about fifty, sixty now. Yeah, I think this one will be sixty six. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, I haven't, I've, I've been very tempted to take breaks and I just haven't. And that's, that's more just for me because I know like if I take too long a break, I'll just never get back into it. Yeah. Because that's how I am. And I, I skipped two weeks last January. I got really sick mm -hmm. and kind of lost my voice. And it's I kind could, of essential. <laughs> yeah. Except here for a podcast, it's a little, <laughs> a little essential. Um, and it was just, I was tired, you know, I wasn't sleeping. I was coughing constantly and my voice was just very squeaky and I could, I could talk very monotone, but I couldn't go above it. <laughs> like if I went up like that, it was oh, like, it was just like, I was like a pubescent boy again. So I was like, I'm not doing it. I'm, I'm taking two weeks off. Yeah. Take two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. But I was sick. So, um, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's sorry. So just going back to you saying about you, you should listen to my misinformed ones while you're cooking. I've had people like speak to me, you know, message me on Instagram or, or um, TikTok or something like that. And like, I find it really strange. I don't know if I've ever said this to you, but like, they tell me like they fall asleep listening to my episodes. And I'm just like, as if you want my voice to be the last thing you hear <laughs> to sleep. <laughs> but some people like it. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, people have told me the same thing about my show and I joke that, yeah, I'm just so boring that I put people because <laughs> like, oh, your voice. And I'm like, no, I have like this ugly nasally voice, but, <laughs> but you do have like a very soothing voice. And I, I could, I could totally see that. Like people just, uh, relaxing to it because they are chill They're I mean, they're, they're spooky, but you have this sort of cadence when you, when you speak, that's very just relaxing. And, uh, like I fall asleep a lot to paranormal tv shows or documentaries mm -hmm. or whatever my son doesn't get it you know he's 16 and he's like how do you like doesn't that scare you and i'm like no for me like this is like relaxing so i could and i've done it to podcasts as well not yours because like i said i usually listen to yours when i'm up up and about yeah. but um other podcasts in the past or like paranormal tv shows or whatever that i don't put much into but you put them on and it's just background noise and yeah it's that know, white just, noise I, yeah yeah i conk out but for me like the spooky stuff is just uh, soothing in that way. Yeah, I, when I'm, I'm home anyway. There's a couple. Yeah, <laughs> not not yeah, out in the woods. <laughs> Definitely not. Don't think so. No. <laughs> no. 
Um, so you've had some personal paranormal experiences? Yeah, I've had um, a couple. I mean, it, it all sort of stems from, I mean, what am I? I keep thinking about how old I am and I keep having to count the ad years on to when my story started. <laughs> <laughs> I was probably about 15, so it's about 17, 18 years ago. And um, sort of my, we lived down south, just past London, my, me and my family, and we were moving up north because my dad got another job, so we move him. Um, and basically, me and my older sister went to live with my nan and granddad so we could get into the schools and start our uh, learning and stuff. Um, and in the meantime, my dad was up and down working, but looking for a house at the same time. And I always remember they, they basically bought a house after a few months of this. And we said, oh, you know, are you going to take us to see it? And they were like, oh, no, we're not taking you to see it. You'll just see it when you move in. It's like, okay, a bit strange. Um, but I'm like 12 years old, so, you know, I can't argue it. <laughs> um, and basically, yeah, the, they bought the house and we, the first time me and my sister seen it was the night we moved in. And then like, you know, sleeping on a mattress and stuff like that while we got everything sorted. And apparently this is what I remember. And I've spoken to my mum about it recently, but apparently the old man and woman who lived there didn't have kids, didn't like kids. So if they known it was like a family that was moving in, then they wouldn't have sold it. Oh, so that's why we never seen it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I, it was it was a nice house. It was like a newish build. It wasn't. There's only been those people in it. Um, and me and my mum were big into the paranormal shows. You know, watching Most Haunted. It was over in the UK. I don't know if you've ever seen it. It's mm -hmm. um, it's one we used to watch like religiously. Um, so, so my mum's quite open to it. So we speak quite a lot about it. Um, and basically we got a card through the door. I've been there for a few years at this point. Nothing had happened. Didn't feel anything. And uh, I opened it and it was like uh, with sympathy cards. The old guy had died. They obviously uh, just hadn't told everyone they'd moved to dress. So that's strange. And then didn't think anything of it. And then a couple of weeks later, I was, um, it was like a Saturday. No one else in the house. It was broad daylight. And I'm sort of, I'm learning bass at the same time. So I'm about 15 now. <laughs> um, and I'm sort of, sort of stood up in my room, playing my bass along to some music and just like moving my head a little bit. And then out the corner of my eyes, I move it back. I just sort of see like a shadow at the top of the stairs. <laughs> but it's, it's so fast. Cause I'm like moving my head to the music. I'm just, and I just think, is that something? And I like put, turn the music off and put my bass down. And I, I went and investigated. I was like, like asking if my mum, dad was there, nobody. Um, but it was like, it was broad daylight and I see it as, as in the light of day. It's like there's this shadow going down the stairs as mm -hmm. if it's walking through the hallway down the stairs. Um, so that was my first experience. So I sort of put two and two together with the card. I was like, oh, is it maybe? I don't know. Um, but the main experience was probably a, f a few weeks later and it was this um, like really vivid dream I was having. So like my bedroom door was like on the latch. So it wasn't shut fully, but if you, you pushed it against the door, you'd hear it go like, mm -hmm. you know, like, um, and I was having this really weird dream and it was like, and I've spoken to people about it and like, it sounds like an out of body experience sort of thing. But basically I was sort of speaking, it sounds really strange. I know, <laughs> but I was like speaking to the shadow that was on the, the other side of the door and a bit of back and forth. And then I said something along the lines of like, oh, I don't believe that I saw you the other week. I don't believe it's you. Like you have to show me, you know, famous last words. Yeah. And um, then like I heard like the door open, like click. And then I seen myself from the perspective of the shadow. So I saw myself lying in bed hmm. and then I like rushed towards myself. And then I woke up basically all cold sweating and, and all this. And yeah, it was terrifying. Wow. Absolutely terrifying. <laughs> That's weird. Did, did you get a sense from the shadow? Like when you saw it, if it was male or female or. I thought it was male. I did get a sense it was male. It sort of had like a hat on as well. Mm. Like other people have said, oh, it's the hat man. I was like, I don't think so. Like, I just think it was this 
to me, I I can't mentalize that, but I can picture it being this older guy who didn't want kids living in his house. Um, but it, it sort of changed because we sort of I sort of had that experience. Um, I had a little sister at that point who used to sleepwalk, used to scare the absolute crap out of me. I'd hear something in the middle of the night and I'd get up and she'd just run past. Oh, <laughs> so that didn't help. <laughs> it's like a, a white nightgown as well. Right, she'd right. Just run past me. Oh, God yeah, sake. that's like right out of a horror movie. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I sort of, I saw after that experience, I never felt scared in the house again. Mm hmm. I sort of felt like it was still there and like, even like my friends would see things like a shadow going up the stairs. And I never, after that night felt, oh, this is bad. Like I'm scared to be here. Like I was never scared of it after that. Mm -hmm. It was really strange. It sort of almost became like a friendly ghost to me anyway. <laughs> did you ever see it again or, or feel anything again or was, I, did it kind of go away? I didn't see it again, but my, I was having, I had some friends over, obviously parents were away, got to, um, and one of my mates said, oh, I'm going to go to bed. Is that all right? I was like, yeah, of course it is. Go to bed, you know, whenever you want, it's fine. So he went upstairs, got into bed. And then about 45 minutes later, me and a few friends are sort of sat in the living room and the stairs are just there right by the door. And I was stood up against like the door frame and they were speaking to me and I just went, has, has Martin just gone upstairs? I was like, no, he went upstairs about 45 minutes ago. And I was like, why? And they were like, I've just seen like the shadow, like a person's shadow going up the stairs. Um, and I was like, oh yeah, well, he's been in bed for 45 minutes. Don't know what to tell him. But, <laughs> so they've seen something, but I never seen it again. Hmm. Basically. Yeah. Interesting. So that sort of sparked like my whole paranormal thing of course <laughs> yeah 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 experiences will do that to you you know yeah. to just get you into it and want it you know wanting answers wanting to explore it more and um do what we do as far as the yeah. podcasts and um yeah so those only experiences you ever had or have you ever had any anything else go on or yeah i mean i had some more recent ones i mean since the podcast and stuff i've been trying to get into um going on ghost hunts and quotation mm -hmm. marks a bit more. Um, I went on a few months back to like this haunted asylum and I sort of came away very skeptical because I'm like, these people are here to sell ghost hunts. So mm -hmm. like they're gonna, so before it started, I was sat next to these, these three women and they had all their own equipment, all their own ghost balls, you know, like those kitten balls that they use these days and they're like REM pod and stuff like that. I said, oh, like, you know, you must be into it. And they were like, yeah, well, you just can't trust their equipment. And I was like, oh, I suppose they could be rigging it. Yeah. Um, and a couple of things happened, but I just, we were in this massive haunted asylum, you know, it's going to be scary regardless of whether there's ghosts in it because it's pitch black and it's huge and it was an old mental asylum. So it's, <laughs> you know, it's, it's going to be scary. And they did, we did like a Ouija board and it was, well, I didn't, but it was other people did. And it was flat. It was like no energy, no nothing. And then sort of went into this corridor where they used to lock all the naughty children in cupboards and we got into cupboards and I sort of thought I heard something behind me sort of like scrape past me. And I thought, okay, I'm getting out of this cupboard now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that was unexplained. Cause that was like something I was someone could it wasn't a piece of equipment somebody could have been messing with i was like stood there it was like it was like the chokey and matilda if you've ever seen matilda mm -hmm. that's what these cupboards were like okay and it was like right behind me and i thought okay that's that's interesting um and there was some tappings when we were doing like table tipping and stuff like that but yeah i came away just deflated really i was a bit like it was a good night me and my mate had fun but you, they put you in specific scenarios in certain places in the building. So it's like they're in charge of it, aren't they? So it's like they put you in the scariest place mm -hmm. in the building, in the pitch black, to get you scared, to make you think you're seeing things and it could possibly rig the equipment so it goes off and so makes you think you're seeing something. But 
but yeah, so there's a couple of things that happened, but not nothing too much that night. Yeah, and it's a shame about the the, the ghost hunts now because it, it it really is like a business, you know, yeah. due to the TV shows and just the popularity of it, that a lot of these places make their money on being haunted. So mm-hmm. when you want to go into ghost hunt, when like when I first started investigating the paranormal and we had a group and we'd go into places like they never charged us yeah. they would basically hand us the key and say <laughs> you know you got you got the building to yourself tonight do what you want to do yeah and they would tell us like oh this happened here this happened there and, and we would investigate everywhere you know we wouldn't just stick to like you're saying oh stick to this area you got to stay here yeah why can't we go everywhere else like what if the activity's not here tonight what if it's in another part and nowadays yeah it's they charge you the money and uh, it's a lot of money. <laughs> so yeah. we, we've stopped doing it because they, they want a lot of money from you. And yeah, I just don't trust a lot of these places that, you know, and, and again, you you can research them. And yeah, 10 years ago, there was not a single ghost story about this place, but then all of a sudden, yeah, there's so a, moves in. yeah, there, there's the yeah. woman in white and there's the, the crying child and there's the angry old man. <laughs> and there's like, where did all these ghosts come from that, no one ever mentioned before it's never in a book it's never on you know on any website but all of a sudden now they're haunted and because they were on ghost hunters or ghost adventures or whatever uh and they're trying to make a business of it and like good on them that's fine and like you said you had fun Mm -hmm. but you kind of come out of it feeling a little deflated because it's it's not what you were expecting and it's not you're not getting that experience yeah and i i booked on another one um Next month, Friday the 13th, we're going, me and my partner, which is going to be fun because he sort of got into these shows the more I've just had them on in the background for the last year, you know, few years. And obviously, listens to the podcast, we sort of, he's dipped his toe a little bit, but not been on a hunt, a ghost hunt. And we're going to, um, it's a really cool location. It's like an old nuclear bunker. Oh, okay. Um, and it's like from the from the surface, it's just a really small building. Um, yeah. yeah. So we go into this nuclear this nuclear bunker. Um, so from the from the grounds, from the surface, it's just this really small building. But I think it's going to be quite creepy of a place. You go down like one hundred and twenty five feet underground, mm-hmm. and it's this huge system of like rooms, and it's all still kitted out. I think obviously because I'm in London and it's quite close. I think it was where, um, whoever the prime minister was like during the cold war would have gone to if like the nuclear war obviously broke out, then that's where he, that's where they'd have gone. I think it was, no, I can't remember who it was now. Was it Thatcher in the eighties? I can't remember. Yeah. It would have been Thatcher, I believe. Yeah. Um, so it's where she would have gone. So I don't mind paying because it's not an extortionate amount. I think it's about sixty pound for six hours, and like at least it's a nice, interesting place to go. Mm-hmm. And, if, and if something spooky happens that I think is legitimate, then all good. But if not, then at least we've had a good night out or something, you know. Yeah, and you know, like you said, being touched is, is weird. I mean, manipulating the equipment or sounds like that's something they could do. They could put speakers in. They could have people behind the walls just banging Tapping on the but, yeah but if you get touched and you know there's nobody behind you like maybe that's more a little bit more yeah legitimate and <laughs> yeah interesting because um, you did quite a few ghost hunts didn't you because i was listening to one of your episodes a while back it was about your old ghost hunting days yeah that that's kind of how i started in this i mean i i've been into the paranormal since i was a kid but i started out in a ghost hunting group you know because mm-hmm. we're in new york city and i mean my my main passion is like bigfoot and the woods and stuff but there's not not a lot of bigfoot hunting here in the city but a lot of ghost hunting uh so we did lots of of ghost hunts we did you know public places but we also did a lot of private residences and Mm -hmm. um we kind of moved away from that though because as it got as it gained in popularity like i said it it just got harder and harder to do because they were they would start charging money yeah we'd have to tell them like look this is costing us money to do this as it is like we have to buy batteries mm-hmm. we have to buy tape we have to you know keep up our equipment gas just money mm-hmm. just to get there you know so and we're taking you know it's it's a weekend away from our families like you're doing an overnight so and then even like the private residences they it became like a spectator sport so we would tell people 
there's only four of us coming. There's four of us in the group. Mm -hmm. Nobody else can be there. Like one person from your family can be there to like, you know, oversee us or supervise. But we go to places and then there's like 10 people hanging out in the basement (laughs) and they're playing music and they're drinking beer. And there there were a couple of investigations. I just, I was like, no, we're leaving. Like we're not doing this because we just wasted a whole bunch of our time. And, you know, you want us to catch EVPs. You want us to hear something but you're down like you're blasting van halen in the basement like <laughs> all we're hearing is david lee roth screaming and <laughs> people laughing as they're drinking and i said this is yeah. this is a waste of our time we have to leave so um so we really stopped doing it except in uh extreme cases uh and we don't publicize it really anymore you know we've yeah. had people contact us and we will go out but we don't talk about it we don't mention it on social media we don't you know mm-hmm. we'll, we'll go we'll help them and we move on but and then you know the pandemic hit and uh you weren't going anywhere <laughs> yeah yeah so then i moved into you know i i was doing the blogging and then i i ended up doing this because the blogging wasn't really working anymore so yeah so let me do a podcast but yeah so i've been on a lot of ghost hunts and most of them yield nothing. It's, you know, 12 hours in a dark building. Yeah. And if you hear a footstep here or there, you're, you know, that's an exciting night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I'm pretty jealous of sort of, this I suppose where it comes into the missing form and one again is like, I'd just love to go on like a, like a trail or something like, cause Bigfoot really like interests me, which is obviously another reason why it, I probably listen to your podcast quite a bit because, yeah. um, but we don't have these huge, I mean, we have some certain national parks, but nothing on your scale that you've got in, in the U S and it's just, yeah, I'd love to just do like a trail for a summer or something and just maybe not a whole summer that might actually kill me, but, um, <laughs> you know, like a camping trip out in like the deep woods or something and, um, see if you can see anything or hear anything, but. I just love like the, the, the whole background of like Bigfoot and Sasquatch and that. I just find it really interesting. Yeah. And it's, it's, I mean, that's what we do. We go out for like two nights, three nights. We don't, we don't stay out there that long. Cause it's tough, you know, it's a, it's, yeah. it's a long hike. And there, there are people who do through hikes. I know you were just talking on your show about the Appalachian trail, mm-hmm. which is huge. I mean, it goes from like yeah. Georgia all the way up to Maine. It's like yeah. most of the East coast here. Uh, but we'll go up to the Adirondacks and, you know, we'll go two, three nights in the woods and, and really mm-hmm. deep. And it's, it's when you do that, it just, it, you, you laugh at the skeptics who are like, oh no, like if it was out there, we would have found it. And it's like, no, like yeah. if I die right here, it'll, it'll take them weeks to find my body. <laughs> like if nobody knows where I am, they're not going to find me. Find you. Yeah. And like I said, like my buddy will go off in the wood, like I'm going to find firewood or I got to go take a, a pee, you know, like, mm-hmm he walks 10 feet away. I can't see him. So you can totally, cause people are like, well, why wouldn't you see Bigfoot? I can't see my best friend wearing, you know, <laughs> brightly colored <laughs> 10 clothing feet 10 feet away from me. So something dark and hairy that is familiar with the woods. And again, I'm not saying it proves that Bigfoot exists. It's just when yeah. you get out there, it's like, you can really just get that sense of like, yeah, something, if something wanted to live out here, it could, and yeah. it would not be seen if it didn't want to be seen. Yeah, and I mean, that's sort of my theory on it is it's some sort of, I do think there is something out there. I just think it's some sort of really old um, species of animal that we just have, we don't, we haven't, don't know what it is yet. But I don't think it's this sort of time traveling monster that goes like between dimensions and takes people through I think that's romanticizing it a little bit, in my opinion, anyway, you know, everyone's entitled to their opinion, but I just think it's some sort of animal. We don't know what it is yet. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of my, my train of thought too. And I mean, there's enough weirdness to it where it does make you wonder. So I, I almost understand why people think about portals and interdimensional stuff. Um, but at the same time, it's like, you got to go with like the simplest explanation until we know better and simplest yeah, is yeah. just that the, yeah this is like an undiscovered primate uh that's been here a long time and just in in very low numbers and uh you know like we've been in the woods many times i've never seen a deer mm. you know i've never seen a bear you know we've heard them but 
these are things that are known to nature that are in, in huge populations out there. And I, we've seen deer tracks, we've seen bear tracks, but we never actually like turned a corner and, oh, there's a deer standing there. They just, they hear you from, you know, miles away and they, they run off. They That's just it. know better. And if you have like an intelligent primate, like it's going to do the same thing. It's going to like avoid you if it wants mm. to. So. Yeah. Cause I think that's one thing, obviously I love my ghost hunting shows. I mean, there's certain ones I like better than others. Um, there's some, I just will not watch at all, but, um, I, I really can't get into the Bigfoot shows. I know I say I like Bigfoot and I find it interesting, but I actually find the shows quite boring. It's cause it's like, like you said, I've, you've said on previous episodes, like people tapping trees and, oh, is it, is it a Bigfoot speaking to us? No, it could just be someone else tapping a tree. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's just, um, there's so much of that now and yeah. it's, it's hard to like filter out what's real and what's not. And like there, there's a place here in Ohio called Salt, Salt Fork State Park. And mm -hmm. like I'm in a Facebook group and like dozens of guys go out there every weekend. And they'll post on Facebook and they're like, oh, we got tree knocks. And I'm like, yeah, so did like, so did like 18 <laughs> other people in this group who went out there on Saturday and heard tree knocks. Like you're all just talking to each other because you're yeah. all going to the same park and you're all just banging on trees. <laughs> and it just, for me, and again, I'm not saying Bigfoot doesn't do tree knock. I don't know. You know, I honestly don't know, but I think to use that as this, as proof evidence, and say, oh, yeah. as evidence and say, oh yeah, this, this is, it, it, it just, no, like I, I'm more interested in someone who's seen Bigfoot, who's, you know, heard something walking around the tent, you know, pushing on the tent. I mean, th those stories really interest me. The tree knocks, it, it's so it's much. a tiny little piece of, of, of a bigger puzzle. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So do you, do you think, so now <laughs> I want to get back into the, to the missing 411 stuff here. Yeah, cool. It's all good to me. Uh, Cause that's something we really share in common as an interest, but do, do you think Bigfoot's involved in this at all or? <sighs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I have got this written down. I think you sort of touched on it earlier. There was this one eight-year-old girl. She's called Catherine Van Alst. I can't remember what, uh, I think it was the Ozark National Park, but she went missing for six days and she was found roughly 30 miles away from where she disappeared. Um, and yeah, there were certain things like the... The rain came in, hindered the search, that the sniffer dogs like couldn't pick up any any trail and like to be found 30 miles away from where you went missing six days ago as an eight-year-old girl is strange. But she had, I think they were searching an area and she just sort of walked out of this cave entrance. And like, oh, there she is. But she was sort of quite nonchalant about it. I think she basically said, yeah, I've been living in this cave for the last six days. And she was like really well maintained. She was like not injured or emaciated or anything like that. And it's, I think she was the one that was like, oh, it's the friendly bears that have been looking after me. And it's like, how have you got there? How have you traveled that far? How are you not almost dead? And yeah, like what are these friendly bears that have been looking after you? It's like, it's strange, but I think there's other things. I don't know, like one of the other ones I've written down was, it's, it's like, I think this is in my other, um, my second Appalachian Trail episode, and you really have to put your tinfoil hat on for it. But like, <laughs> like the wild men idea that there's communities of wild people living out there and like there's Dennis Martin went missing. So he was about six as well was supposed to be playing a prank with his brother and cousins, jumping out on the parents. And as they jumped out of the bush, the older brother looked back and like the little brother was gone. Right from right underneath his nose. And then like somebody apparently was like seven miles away and heard a young child scream. And as they turned and looked, there was like rustling and like a man running in the bushes. So it's like, I don't know. It, it, Bigfoot, is it like, could be wild men, could be nothing. You know, it, it's difficult to say, but like you say, the, the woods are so dense and like these people are going missing. Like, it's like, is it a normal explanation? Is it not? Is it paranormal? Is it, who knows really? Yeah. And it's just, uh, 
there are some cases where like the, the body will be found and they're naked. And they say like, when you get hypothermic, you tend to want to take your clothes off. It's, it's mm-hmm. kind of counterintuitive because people think, yeah. Oh, you're getting cold. But when your body starts shutting down, you, you feel warm, even though your body mm-hmm. is cold. So, or you feel constricted. So a lot of people will during hypothermia, take their clothes off. Uh, but you have these instances where the clothing is like neatly folded and put on a rock. Mm-hmm. Like, and again, these are people who've been lost in the woods for days, if not weeks, no food, no water. Why are they, mm-hmm. you know, if they're taking their clothes off in a sort of state of not being all there, you know, cause you're hypothermic, yeah. you're scared, you're tired. Why are they folding their clothes neatly? The clothes usually are not dirty. They're not ripped. Uh, the shoes are right that, you know, it's like, it's like, it's again, been placed, uh, yeah, it's like a, it's like a crime scene almost. It's like very yeah. delicately put down, folded. Like, you know, if it was like a bear attack or something, the clothes would be just all torn up. So that sort of doesn't quite account for everything when they say, oh, it could be an animal because it's like, well, the clothes were found neatly stacked. Yeah. Or other times when they, when they do find these children who are, yeah, like 10 miles away or 15 miles away, their clothes are not all the time, but they've found kids with like clothing with no rips, no tears, yeah. no dirt. And it's like, how did you walk 10 miles and not get dirty? Not, yeah. you know, especially as a kid. I mean, they're, wand- they're not on, yeah, they're not on a trail. And I mean, even mm-hmm. on the trail, you're going to get hit in the face with branches. You're going to get snagged on stuff. I mean, it's, it's, you're going to get dirty. I mean, I go out in the woods yeah. and I'm, I'm dirty within five minutes. There's already smudges and it's dirt. You know, you're out, you're yeah. out in nature, like stuff's going to happen. So it just makes you wonder like what happens. And, and I know like David Polites, who does the missing 411 and kind mm-hmm. of uh, compiled all this and does the, the characteristics of it. Yeah. A, a lot of people throw a lot of shade on him and say, oh, he's, he's cherry picking. He's, uh, and, and in a way he is because, and he admits this and he says, I'm not mm-hmm. talking about people who are mentally ill. I'm not talking about people who are clearly suicidal, who walk into the woods and want to die. He's like, I'm talking yeah. about the person who's just out in the woods, you know, for a walk with their partner one day and disappears. And yeah. they're, they're otherwise healthy. They're otherwise, uh, mentally stable. They're otherwise, they shouldn't have gone missing. So why are they missing? Yeah. And he also says too, like he he's only looking at cases that have these characteristics. And so, yeah, if he's cherry picking, he's cherry picking, but it's still, you can't overlook it. He's cherry picking, but these are happening. Right. Yeah. Right. So if he's cherry picking, he found three cases, then like, okay, you're cherry picking, but he's got books and books and books of this stuff going back, you know, a couple of hundred years. Hmm where people go missing and it's these same, you know, I think he's got like eight or nine characteristics, got, but yeah. m- most of these cases have at least five or six of these characteristics attached to them. Like you said, like weird weather afterwards or the, the, the dogs can't pick up a, a scent, uh, close to water, close to water. One. Yep. Or granite. I think granite was another one mm. like the rocks. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just very strange. Have you seen the movies? There's there's a couple of movies on I've watched like documentaries. A while back, I mean, I'd I need to go back and watch them really as I'm carrying on doing these episodes. But I did watch one of them. Regrettedly, I had to buy it. It was really upsetting because I paid for so many subscriptions and it wasn't on any of them. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but um, <laughs> got about five or six different subscriptions, but I still had to pay for it. Um, and yeah, I think. Oh, is it, is it missing form one, the hunted, or mm-hmm. I think I list, I think I watched the UFO connection one. Well, okay, yeah, that's the yeah. third one I think. But I think there's 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 missing four one one, just the plane, the first movie. Then there's the hunted, and then there's yeah, the UFO connection. Yeah, because uh, yeah, I mean UFOs are very in at the minute, aren't they? So it's yeah, <laughs> <laughs> which is another pos- one of the possibilities, I suppose, in my mind anyway, because. I suppose to vanish is is different if it was a big bigfoot that's just grabbed someone and is running through the imagine it's running through the trees at pace and it just picks up a four-year-old as it's going you would hear it um whereas a ufo if it just took somebody yeah like beam them up or whatever beam <laughs> them up you, you yeah i'd hear that teleport uh, them yeah 30 miles away <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i mean yeah, there's definitely definitely aliens out there. It's just 
again, it's it's sort of to me, it's sort of where ghost hunting these ghost hunting shows were like twenty years ago. It sort of it was always popular for people that were interested in it, but now it's got a bit of heat because of all the documents and all that that's been released and like you said in one of your previous shows they're not saying that it's definite they're out there they're saying like there is a part of the government which is in charge of this it's not like oh here's the proof aliens are definitely there it's still a gray area um but it's sort of picking up picking up the momentum now with all that i think and yeah, it's just interesting. Yeah, it shows that there's something there, but like we still don't have proof. Yeah. But I, I do think it's interesting that the government's at least hearing these people and admitting that, like, okay, yeah, we have we have a division that's investigating this. Yeah. But we've had but that before. We had Blue Book, we had Project Sign, Project Grudge, like all these other things that were looking at the UFO phenomenon and then I'll ultimately were like, Yeah, there's nothing to it. It's all fake. So it just makes me wonder if that's what we're dealing with again. Like there's another government funded program that's going to eventually just come back and be like, yeah, it's all just yeah. drones and then, balloons. and <laughs> Yeah. I mean, it, it's strange because there was, um, I think I'd, I was doing a UFO story for one of my episodes a while back. Um, and on, on the UK government website, you can literally go in and type UFO sightings and it, comes up because they there's some sort of legis legislation which means they can only keep documents classified for a certain amount of years mm -hmm. um so now like from say 20 years ago the first reports are coming out and you just read it it's just um just a box it just says where it was who who reported it what time and what they saw so they're not like saying this isn't this is aliens this is ufos they're just saying and you can just sort of see a correlation with certain areas of the of the UK, mm -hmm. seeing specific lights, and these are people that aren't connected in any way, but they're still reporting it. Yeah, it's just yeah, and I don't, you know, it's it's reports. People are seeing it. The government's taking these reports, but the government's whatever government you're talking about is still not coming out and saying, yeah, yeah, these are definitely alien. They're just saying we don't know what they are could be foreign could be natural could be you know whatever and it, it, it's just weird to me that uh no no government on earth is is admitting i'm sorry my computer is going sorry. weird right now <laughs> but no, you know no no government on earth is coming out and saying that these things exist yeah and our enemies like why wouldn't our enemies if they had proof of this come out and say yeah you know here, here's proof so it, it's just weird to think that every government on earth, friend or enemy or whatever, they're all just kind of, we don't not, know. Not admitting it. Yeah. Not admitting it. So, and then the conspiracy theorists will say, well, the aliens have threatened all of them and said, if you say anything, you know, which yeah, I don't know if I, mean, I believe in that. But <laughs> No, I, I quite like a um, bit of a rabbit hole. I, I watched Interstellar recently. I don't know if you've seen it. Oh yeah. My son and I just watched um, that a few months ago. Yeah, it was, it was quite good, but I was like, it's very tinfoil hat territory, but I like this over like the idea that the government are being shunned by aliens. But I think there was like, I can't remember when it was, maybe it was during, again, the Cold War where the threat of like nuclear war was really high. Um, but apparently where the nukes are based, a big, a, a lot of them in America, the president at the time or somebody, I can't, I don't know when, I've, again, it's very loose in my mind. I've not got specifics, but was very close to pressing the button. Mm -hmm. And they apparently reported a lot of UFO activity in the area. And I kind of like the idea that they're, cause it, cause it all comes into interstellar where like he had to get to a certain point to come back in time to tell his past self to do this. It's like, I wonder if it's like, I'm not saying it is, this is, you know, don't shout at me in the comments or whatever, but <laughs> like, what if it's just us from like millions of years in the future who need to get to a certain point to like get off the planet and travel like interstellarly. And if we hit the nukes, then that's not going to happen. 
So it's just like, again, very tinfoil hat, but I kind of like that idea. Yeah, there's lots of theories like that, that it's not extraterrestrial, but they're interdimensional or that it's just us, just us from the future. Um, Because again, a lot of people say when they see aliens, they're they're humanoid. They have two eyes, they have a nose, they have a mouth, they have fingers and toes and they're bipedal. Mm -hmm. And they say like, of all the infinite possibilities possibilities. out there in the universe, why would these things kind of look like us from the future? Yeah, uh, it, that people are seeing. So maybe it is us from the future. So who knows? Yeah, um, mm-hmm. yeah just weird, weird stuff to think about. Weird one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, did you have any other stories you wanted to talk about? I know you mentioned some four one one stuff. I, I don't know if you wanted to, or if you hit that already. No, yeah, I've got those already. Yeah, oh, okay. Talk about them. Yeah, the stories, but there's like I say in my episodes, it's, it's something strange going on. It's just compiling the evidence, I suppose, and looking at it through a objective lens like not oh this is something that's definitely happening but like you're the same because i know you spoke about it before but like you always have to sort of look at the whole picture not just from your perspective it's like okay these people are going missing but that's why i suppose david politis cherry picks them because he's like this person's gone missing but he was suicidal so can't count that one it's like you've got to look from all angles and yeah i think that's why i like the missing fallen ones really and the interesting options yeah and i like that his whole sort of inspiration for for this was that the local governments were not really keeping track of this they weren't really caring you know like in and that's what kind of bothered him about it was like all these people like there's many more people missing than we know about it doesn't really get the media coverage it doesn't get the the police action that it really deserves i mean a lot of them do but mm-hmm. you know you have this many people missing it's it's concerning and yeah like, like and that's what he's trying to point out is that these are not people who were clear victims of an animal attack you know if if, if that happens he rules it out you know if yeah. you can tell like the clothing is ripped and bloody it's like okay you know mountain lion or a bear or, you know some sort of predator got this person it's for him it's really the people who just seem to vanish off the face of the earth uh, yeah. either either permanently or just temporarily like like we said earlier they show up in a place that was previously searched many times like how did that person mm-hmm. get there when you have hundreds of search and rescue people combing this area yeah and then a week later the body just shows up there and it's like that's weird well, there's this, there's this one i know i just said that there wasn't any more stories but just <laughs> just talking about the fact that obviously like the the government or the park authorities themselves were like not really bothered by it. There was like this girl she called Eloise Lindsay and she was like an experienced hiker. She'd done a load of trails and she was, I think she was doing the Appal- part of the Appalachian trail. And she was like, I read in her like testimony. I was like, that is smart. I would not think that like she was, going between checkpoints and she was writing herself with someone else, even though she was by herself. So I was like, oh yeah, like if someone's after someone, they would just think, oh, who's easy pickings, the girl on their own. So she was really clever, but she, she went missing for like, it's about 10, 12 days. She like, uh, she, she thought she heard people behind her, men behind her on the trail talking about her, like they were going to attack her and she sort of ran into the woods. And then she said she was basically stalked for the next 10 days by this group of wild men. So like she wouldn't like light a fire. She liked seeing the rescue helicopters and she wouldn't go to them because she thought by the time she got there that they'd get her. But she, she got out and basically they didn't want anything to do with it. She was like, no, I was followed for 10 days through the woods by this group of wild men. And the authorities were like trying to shut her up. They were like, no, you weren't like you you heard something else you were you were paranoid you were like hungry you were exposed you were like an exposure you know from the weather it's like you were imagining things and she she sort of spoke up quite a bit about it but it's strange like why would they just shut her up unless they know something's there yeah it's um I, i've heard a lot of stories like that um mm. from other youtubers i watch people who are, who are lesser known i don't know if you know les stroud survivor man I don't, but I, I can uh, um, I'll give it a watch on YouTube. Yeah, he, he's Canadian, uh, but he had a show about surviving in the wilderness, and he mm-hmm. had some encounters that he thinks were were possibly Bigfoot. But 
you hear a lot of these guys talking about um like the drug farmers in the woods and you got to yeah. be careful about that because these guys are very territorial and you, you have it a lot more on the west coast where it's like these mm-hmm. big giant pot farms and yeah you know they're they're armed with machine guns i mean these mm-hmm. these guys are, are serious and they will you know if they feel like you're trespassing they'll shoot you and yeah they just don't believe in law and order they don't believe in you know guilty innocent it's just you're on their property it doesn't matter if you're a, a lost hiker it doesn't matter if you're whatever you are, they will shoot and kill you. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot of these stories about guys like this and just other people who go way deep in the woods miles, you know, 20 miles in haven't seen another soul. They, you know, they cook dinner, they have their little campfire, they get in their tent. And then at three in the morning, there's somebody walking around their tent Mm. and it's not a big foot. They can tell, you know, they can hear voices. They can hear, you know, yeah. Um, or they'll peek out of the tent and they'll see a guy, you know, like just a weird guy in a baseball cap or whatever walking. And it's like, where do these people come from? You know, because yeah. you hike 20 miles in, you need gear, you need the proper boots, you need the proper pack, you need food and water. And then they're just in the middle of nowhere. And yeah, at three in the morning, there's some weird dude just like in shorts and a T-shirt and a baseball cap, like walking around their, their site or walking through their site. Yeah. Or just two guys walking through and talking. And it's like what are these people doing at three in the morning in the middle of nowhere? Um, so, and I know you mentioned this a lot in your, your most recent episode about these wild men of the woods yeah. and who they might be. And again, it, it's something I've heard about for many years and you try not to think about it when you're out camping. <laughs> <laughs> I can um, imagine. <laughs> yeah. But I've heard about it like down in the pine barrens and, and just up in the Adirondacks and just, you know, some of them are just hermits who just, kind of eschew modern yeah. they don't want to pay taxes they don't want to deal with modern society so they just they go in the woods and they they mm-hmm. hunt and they live in a little shack and that's yeah. what they want to do but then you do hear these stories about this like you said like this woman who and that story sounds vaguely familiar i have to look that up again but that yeah that she was like being hunted by a yeah. group of like not regular guys like 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 woods woods type people you know yeah. like primitive. wrong turn like people i think she was trying to get out <laughs> yeah yeah uh, but yeah it's yeah it's eloise Lindsay. her name is it's a good good story but yeah it's just strange how they sort of just didn't want anything to do with it yeah yeah that's and, and again i think polites has even said that a, a big reason for this might be that they just don't want to scare people like if you tell mm-hmm. people that there's that bigfoot exists if you tell people that yeah people go missing and we don't know why and we can never find them Tourism and uh, drops. Yeah. Or there's wild men in the woods. Like who's going to go to these national parks? Like the national yeah. parks would lose, you know, if someone tells you Bigfoot exists and it's this eight foot creature that can rip you in half, who's going to go <laughs> camping, you know, or you might get accosted by a group of 10 hillbillies, you know, like from deliverance or wrong turn or, you know, yeah. who's going to go into the woods. If, if the government acknowledges these things, mm. I, I think you would have, you know, uh, a riot on your hands or, or at least people just not doing these things anymore and you would lose funding yeah. and so it, it does make you wonder why they didn't take her story seriously like mm-hmm. i understand she was tired and hungry and but you usually know if someone's tracking you yeah um so yeah, yeah spooky really story. Strange one. very strange one yeah definitely uh do you have any other ones you want to talk about before we start that, wrapping that up? That is or... the last one I had written yeah. down. It's definitely right. the last one. <laughs> uh, so do, do you think, do you, do you have a theory for the missing 401 stuff? Like, do you think there's any one overarching theory or do you think it's a combination of things? I think it's a combination. I've not done, I, I just need to do more research, more episodes and sort of more viewing, I think, and reading. Um, I think there's, I, I couldn't put my, you're asking me now, I couldn't put my finger on one of them. But I could see all three, like Bigfoot, Wild Men, and UFOs. I could see a mixture of them at the moment. It's just, yeah, need to do more research. Yeah, it's just it's it's a hard because because again, there's a lot of similarities between them, but there's also distinct differences. Because again, some yeah. people do show back up and they're fine, and then some of them they just find their bodies. Some of them they never find the body, and it's it just makes you wonder how did this person get so far away? You know, they're searching a 10 mile radius and, and, yeah. you know, this person has been missing for a day. How, how did they 
get, get so, so far. far. And little kids, you know, you have these little kids in, you know, sandals and shorts and <laughs> they're finding them at the top of like these Rocky Mountains where people with proper gear couldn't really get up easily. You know, adults with proper gear couldn't get yeah. to where this child was found. So how did the kid get there? And again, is it possible? Yes. Is it probable? Not really. So it just, <laughs> it just makes you wonder how these things happen and why they happen. And, um, but yeah, really weird stuff. So yeah, I don't know either, but like yeah, I said, no, no, no matter what it is, it's a weird phenomenon. Yeah, definitely. And you know, maybe in another fifty episodes, I can come back on. And I've got a bit more, uh, <laughs> bit more knowledge. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But, uh, but yeah, keep up the good work though, and everybody check out Spooky Island Radio. I'm going to link to it in the description below. Check out Andy; he's got a great show. Uh, the missing 401 episodes are my faves, but you do other long form episodes and ghost mm-hmm. stories and all sorts of cool stuff. Don't fall asleep listening to his episodes, though. Yeah, you, want, you, want, you want to stay to the end, uh, mm-hmm. even though <laughs> you get the hits either way. But you want to listen because Andy's awesome. And uh, good to finally have you on, my friend. Oh, thank and you. Yeah, no, you, yeah. If it's you ever want. Yeah, yeah. We've been talking about it for so long and just timing and, and personal lives and yeah, just trying to get the schedules to, the, to align has been tough. But I'm glad we finally did it. No, me too. And uh, yeah, we'll definitely do it again. Cool. Thank you very much, right? See you soon. Take care, man. All right. So I want to thank my buddy Andy for coming on the show. It's been a long time coming. Love Spooky Island Radio. I listen to it pretty religiously almost every week. You guys should too. It's a great show. He does really cool stories, huge catalog. He's like, he's got 50 episodes, a lot of the missing 411 stuff, which is really good. But his other stuff's good too. The Campfire Tales, the long form episodes where he tells just ghost stories and other spooky tales really cool stuff. So I'm glad I finally got to speak to him because we just a lot of messaging back and forth on Instagram, but talking to someone in person is just very different and much cooler. So I'm glad we finally got to do it. Again, we've both just been going through some crazy personal things and scheduling and he's in England. I'm here in the U S so it's just timing differences. By the time I get off work, he's usually going to bed. So a little tough, but glad I finally got to speak with him. He's great. Got to pick his brain a little bit about the missing 411 stuff. Uh, I've been drinking ginger ale this whole time. It's not beer, so sadly. Uh, So, yeah, if you guys liked what you heard, please give us a like and a subscribe. Leave us a review if you're listening on audio. I have a new store up. So if you guys want odd and untold merchandise, T-shirts and hoodies and mugs and all that sort of good stuff, I'm going to leave a comment. Leave a link in the description below, not a comment. I'm commenting right here. So yeah, you can buy t-shirts and all sorts of merch. I'm going to be adding more stuff too for like Halloween themed stuff and Christmas themed stuff and all great stuff like that. Just different logos or different versions of the logo. So yeah. Um, So yeah, again, once again, thank you, Andy, for coming on. Show him some love. Go check out his podcast, uh, Spooky Island Radio. Link in the description below. And until next week, everybody, rock and roll.